So a few days ago, I came across the Stack Overflow question when I was trying to figure out on how can I get predictions faster out of my SQLN model. The model was too big and it was taking a lot of time to load it and run the predictions. And since the model was going to be deployed into production, we wanted a low latency system. The models are actually run on an AWS EC2 instance. So we had GPU power at our disposal. And what I wanted to know was, is it possible in any way to run the scikit-learn models on GPU? But unfortunately, the scikit-learn does not support GPU because it is not intended to work for deep learning. So uh, I was sad, but I thought that they might add it in their September update. So scikit-learn has finally released their update, but uh, they didn't add it. So scikit-learn hasn't added GPU support in their latest update. And I don't think they're going to add it in the coming new feature. So now what do we do? We want a fast system that's running like in milliseconds or at least a few seconds in production. The answer to this question is Hummingbird. So Hummingbird is a library, a Python library that, that is developed by Microsoft and it can leverage the scikit-learn models and run them on GPU so that the computations in faster and you get your predictions in like milliseconds or just a few seconds. So what Hummingbird is actually doing is it's compiling the traditional ML models and converting them to tensor computations. And since these are tensor computations, Hummingbird can leverage the GPU power available. So we can definitely convert our SQLN models into PyTorch. And since PyTorch is able to utilize the GPU power, we can load the models on the GPU and run the predictions. Sounds fancy, isn't it? But there is a catch to it, which we will definitely look into. So make sure you watch this video till end. My name is Rishabh and welcome to the channel. Let's get into this. So first we'll go ahead with installing the Hummingbird library. So we'll just uh, copy it and run this here, pip install Hummingbird hyphen ML. So what this is going to do is this is going to install the basic dependencies for sklearn. I mean, all the, all the basic models for sklearn are done except for light GBM and XGBoost. Now, uh, since the library is installed, let's move ahead with the example. So we are going to uh, first import these three things. So let's just first And this and instead of the random forest classifier we are going to import the extra trees classifier they're more or less uh, kind of the same thing with just one difference of the uh, type of sampling uh, that they do so let's just run this okay we have it imported and let's just now create a training data set uh, we're going to do this and instead of just a hundred thousand rows we are actually going to create uh, a little bigger data set so we create uh, 500,000 rows. We actually want the model to be bigger because there's something that uh, we need to keep in mind when working with the big data. And uh, uh, usually the data that we have, the training data that we have is in huge quantities. So the model might indeed be uh, a lot bigger. So that, that is one thing that I just wanted to show. Um, so let's just train the model, the extra trees classifier model. And we are intentionally going to make the model bigger. So I'm going to uh, set the max step parameter as none and I'm going to set the end jobs parameter as uh, minus one. So what this uh, end jobs is going to do is uh, it's going to train this extra trees classifier uh, model on all the CPU power that I have uh, available. So here I have uh, this is the task manager and I'm into the performance tab up here. So this is uh, the, the utilization chart we can say of uh, the CPU. I have uh, an Intel i5, so it's a six core, 12 thread CPU. And uh, each graph up here, so we have uh, 12 graphs up here and each graph actually belongs to individual thread performance. So they're currently the utilization, as you can see, it's around three or 4%, but when I run this, it's going to jump up to 100%. So let's just run this. And now you can see the utilization has jumped up to 100% and each of these uh, thread graphs are dropping up to 100%. Let's just wait for this model to train. Actually, it shouldn't take uh, too long. Okay, so it's done. Uh, it actually took a few seconds to run. Let me just bring this down. So now we are going to convert uh, this model, the extra trees uh, scikit-learn model into uh, PyTorch and we are going to use Hummingbird for that. So uh, here I have used the convert function that was imported from the hummingbird.ml package and we are converting this specific SQLN model into PyTorch. Let's just run that. One eternity later. Okay, so this took uh, 
like 10 minutes to to finish and i guess this is because uh, it, it totally depends on the amount of ram that you have available so i have 16 gigs of ram that was uh, that that's why it was taking some time to run so now let's do one thing uh let's just see the size of this model so let's first just uh save this model into a pickle file so it is saved now let's just check the size of the model so here uh, i have a custom function called file size which would return the size of the model and uh, when i run this let's see what we have okay so the size of the model is uh, 3 gb it's not as huge as i imagined <laughs> i actually thought it would be somewhere around 10 or 15 gb but anyway so this is the size uh, of the sklearn model now let's do one thing uh, let's just go back to the example up here and let's just uh, run the predictions so instead of predicting for uh, the complete data that we have 500,000 rows let's just uh, predict this for um, let's say 10,000 rows the first 10,000 rows we are going to input that and we are going to time this uh, execution as well so currently this is running on CPU now this model will run on CPU and it will get the predictions based upon the CPU time okay so this took around uh, 3 seconds now let's just increase the size of the data a little bit so let's say we want to have predictions for the first 50,000 rows. Let's just roll it. Uh, let's now run it. So it's running uh, on CPU currently because uh, we haven't actually loaded or transferred the model to CUDA or the GPU. We're going to do that uh, as our next step. Okay, so for 50,000 predictions, it took around uh, uh, 14 seconds. Now let's just move this model to CUDA. We also need to track this time as well because actually this is going to uh, happen in uh, the, the prediction time or the inference time. So let's just do this. So now what it's going to do is uh, it's going to transfer the model to my GPU and when I check the utilization for GPU. Um, okay, so now you can see the, the utilization for my GPU is 3 GB out of 8 GB. Now I have uh, an NVIDIA RTX 3070 Ti that, that has uh, yeah, 8 GB of dedicated graphics memory and uh, the model size is 3 GB and I have transferred it to the GPU so it's using 3 GB out of uh, total 8 GB uh, memory available. So it took around uh, two and a half seconds to do that. Now let's uh, do the part that we all be, have been waiting for. Let's run the predictions on the GPU and we're going to time it as well. Okay we do it and let me just roll to commit in the center uh, we are go also going to monitor the GPU utilization up here so you as you can see the utilization is currently residing at 25 28 29 percent it should boost up as soon as I run this cell oh okay oh okay God. okay no. okay so <laughs> so um, okay this is surprising I actually wasn't expecting this so the C as as you can compare the results, um, the the CPU one ran in uh, like fourteen point three seconds, but the GPU one ran in uh, like two hundred and seventy milliseconds. I mean that's 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 way too low. Okay, this okay. <laughs> I'm still shocked. Okay, but we also need to consider this time as well, right? The time taken to move the model from CPU to GPU. Now, some of you may argue that uh, we can do this at the training time and the model will, will reside in GPU, but that's, that's actually not true. So what happens is when you transfer the model to CUDA, uh, it, actually, it, it is actually loaded into the GPU memory and when you save it using the save command, it's definitely uh, saved onto the disk and not on the GPU because GPU is, you know, it's going to shut down whenever you shut the kernel, it's going to reset the memory. It's going to clear all the memory available. And uh, when you run the save command after you have run the CUDA command, uh, what it's going to do is and what it actually means is it's going to load uh, and when you load the model, it's going to load the model and then transfer it to CUDA, right? If you don't uh, actually run this uh, model.2 CUDA command, it's going to keep the model on CPU and if you run the save command, it's going to save it on uh, the disk. And when you load it, it's going to load into the CPU itself. 
I hope this makes sense. So whenever you run this command, it doesn't matter. Even if you run this uh, in the seat, in the in the training time, or even if you run this in the inference time, this is going to take this much time uh, at the inference, no matter where you run this. Now here's a catch. So as you can see, the size of the model that I have here is already quite big. It's like three GB model. So ideally, it's not suggested that in the production environment. Uh, we have these you know these kind of file sizes or these kind of model sizes the size of the model in production should be uh, typically in few MBs now uh, what happens is now imagine the size of this model was uh, more than 8 GB now as I mentioned the GPU memory that I have available is 8 GB so, so let's say for some training data the model size is bigger than the GPU memory that we have available now in that case what what is going to happen is it's going to run out of the GPU memory because that that's kind of a hardware limitation. You cannot uh, you you cannot bypass that. So that is the trap or that is the flaw that we have for Hummingbird. So Hummingbird is actually not made to be used when you have bigger models. Flaw number two: Hummingbird can only be used to run predictions. You cannot actually train an SQLN model on GPU using Hummingbird. It can only be used for predictions. And also at the time of prediction, you can just use the basic methods that we have for a model at the time of prediction, like the dot predict method and the dot predict probi method. That's for predicting probability. Another thing that I would like to mention as uh, one of one of the limitation is Hummingbird is only meant to be run on one single GPU machines. Now, in some cases, what might happen is when you are deploying this in production, let's say you're deploying this on AWS environment and in AWS environment, we have various kind of instances. Some instances have multiple GPUs. Now, when you have multiple GPUs, you would definitely want the Hummingbird library or the predictions to be run on all the GPUs to make the inference time even faster. But Hummingbird currently does not support that. When you load the model using this command into the memory, it's going to load that on the first GPU available and it's going to run all the predictions on that particular GPU only. Okay, so I hope this was useful and you learned something new. If you actually learned something new, maybe consider subscribing to the channel. Give this video a like. If you disliked something, maybe comment down and tell me uh, what could be done to improve or if I said something wrong, what's the correct thing and I'll catch you guys uh, in the next one. Bye-bye.